Hello, family. Um, there's a couple of videos that I've been really wanting to do, but I just wanted to do a really quick one tonight, and I will get to the other ones, Lord willing. But uh, it's been a few days since I've done a video. I don't even know how long. But just had some, you know, other stuff going on, just good God stuff, just pressing into Him and just kind of what He's been saying and doing. And uh, um, if those of you guys are asking, is there something on my face? Yes, I got a, a tattoo, the resurrection, life resurrection power cross with the lightning bolt. And I also got my knuckles tattooed. It says live to love. Isn't that cool? I've been wanting to do that for like 20 plus years. So it was super awesome to, to get it done. My buddy Brooks who tattoos who's been coming here and is just part of the family, him and his wife, Sarah. Um, yeah, it's he tattooed me and I tattooed him. It was super fun. So just uh, get that out of the way so you guys don't think that you're seeing something or you're telling me to wipe my face off. But uh, it was cool. Last night we had the Little Rev Bible study where Brian, my boy's doing just such an amazing job stepping into his just uh, – position as like a, a teacher and just teaching us the word and it's actually been super fun because just I feel like everything that we do just kind of pressing into there's lots of Bible studies and lots of churches and we all have our different place in the body and just uh, kind of pressing into that and asking God how like he wants us to do it as a family it's been really fun because Brian just had it on his heart for just everybody to kind of read different parts of the scriptures that we're reading like you know whatever chapters we're going through and uh in that I'm like man I just feel like God you're there's something else that you want to you want to do and it's been super fun because recently we feel like God's been just saying as one person's reading as we're going around the room and different people are reading the other people to just kind of press in and I've heard and kind of read about like uh, the Jews, when they would read the Torah, that's what they would do. They would put themselves, as they're reading the scriptures, they would put themselves, go into a mental picture and put themselves into the characters of the Bible. And it's so fun doing that because you're giving the Holy Spirit an opportunity to really speak to you in a different way, where sometimes when you're just reading it, there can be just, you want to intellectualize everything as opposed to really like putting yourself in that situation. So if you guys have never done that, it's super, super cool as you're reading, just kind of like allow the Holy Spirit, just surrender like your imagination and kind of invite him into that and invite him to just speak to you, just putting yourself in the positions of the people that you're reading about in the word. So we've been doing that in uh all that to be said, last night we were going through Romans 12, which I wanted to read you guys a little bit, if that's okay tonight. And uh, we're reading through Romans 12, and uh, tonight we had our regular Saturday night group, and there's just a, a few of us here, just our spiritual fam. And uh, as I was praying, I felt like God was saying, Jesus was saying, I've given you all everything that you need to glorify God. And I think a lot of the times we kind of think like, man, like, God, like, am I supposed to be like singing a song or should I be worshiping or should I be, in, be, be interceding? And like we're, I've done videos recently where we can fall into that self-righteousness of just kind of trying to figure out what we're supposed to be doing for God or what worship looks like at that moment in time. And I love John 6. I know I touch on John 6 all the time, but John 6, how it talks about um, they asked Jesus, what, you know, what do we do to get in on the works of God? And Jesus says, the only work that God wants from you is for you to put faith in the one that he sent. Meaning every form of worship, every form of doing God's will always stems from our faith in Jesus because of outside of him, we can't produce spiritual fruit. So it was super cool because I felt like God was saying everything that you're feeling Everything that you're thinking becomes a form of worship as you're just trusting me. And I'm like, man, that's so cool. That's exactly what Romans 12, just from that light, that's exactly what Romans 12 is talking about. It's talking about us being living sacrifices. And yes, we're transformed by the, by the renewing of our mind, but I was seeing 
as we're presenting our bodies to God as a living sacrifice, like we're actually allowing our bodies, like the things that we're feeling, the things that we're sensing to become sacrifices because in our flesh, we're making everything about us. Oh man, I feel sick. And God, what do I do to get you to like fix me? Or, oh man, I feel stressed. God, what do I do to get you to make the stress go away? And we're literally trying to use God to serve ourselves. And we're wondering why we're not experiencing freedom. And God's maturing us to where we really are living sacrifices. We're acknowledging, man, God, I've been saved and you're continuing to fulfill the work that you started within me. But just like Jesus, true freedom was he was completely living for God's glory. Not trying to use God to make his circumstances more comfortable, but laying it all down to glorify God, knowing as he was in that place, he was a complete and perfect vessel for the Holy Spirit to work through to establish the kingdom and the hearts of men of the people that were around him. And just presenting the way he laid down his life brought us into that place of coming into salvation so we could experience just, you know, being the spirit of adoption, being sons and daughters of God, resurrection life. And so uh, um, let me read that scripture to you guys. And then we'll pray. Okay, are you guys ready? So in Romans 12, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. And I've read the scripture for years and it spoke. But uh, just that part, your bodies to God, was really standing out because like, as you read down lower in Romans 12, it's just talking about just us, not just being living sacrifices, but it's talking about us as like the body, the body of Christ. And so the things that we're feeling, our bodies actually find purpose as it's sacrifice to God for his glory. Because in that place, we're experiencing who we are as the body of Christ, no longer living for ourselves, but we're actually positioned to bring wholeness and healing and freedom to the people around us because so much of what we're feeling until it's surrendered to God, it's actually not finding purpose. Like so much of the stuff that we're actually thinking or feeling as we're trusting Jesus, the Holy Spirit will reveal, hey, you're feeling this because I want to bring freedom to the person that's next to you or I want to bring deliverance to the person that's next to you or I want to bring yeah, just a physical healing to the person that's next to you. And we don't walk in that revelation until we're finding our purpose in living for God's glory, not what we can get. And so uh, it says, let me see here. It says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let them be a living and a holy sacrifice. And obviously that word sacrifice means sacrifice, you know. The kind you will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And I feel like that can be the battle sometimes of like, okay, God, I want to worship you and I want it to be acceptable, but we can do it out of performance. And I've had so many times over years and years and years I've been praying and God's like, I don't want the worship that you want to give me. I want the worship that you don't want to give me. And I'm like, what does that mean? And he goes, I don't want you to proclaim the things that you're trusting me with or the things that you're thanking me for that appear to be good. I want you to trust me and thank me for the things that appear to be bad. I don't want you leaning on your understanding or eating of the knowledge of good and evil. I want you to thank me for the things that you're looking at through the filter of your understanding so I can bring freedom to those things, to where you can actually feast, to have a Thanksgiving meal as you're trusting me and thanking me for the things that suck or the things that are hard. Because in that place, we become that living sacrifice that brings glory to God. But we're also freed from ourselves to where we're finding purpose in the things that we're actually going through, embracing our sufferings, knowing that we need these things to develop develop our faith so we can actually be those vessels of the Holy Spirit to work through, no longer making it about us, but free to live for the glory of God. And so it says, uh, um, 
don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. And we could obviously go really into that. And for me, just being transformed by the renewing of my mind was one of the main things when I had a revelation or an encounter with Jesus when I was 25, he said, you're a product of the thoughts you choose to entertain. And well, I've done videos on that before, but it's a choice. We choose to believe the things that we think about. We choose to entertain those thoughts, but he's given us the option. He's given us the mind of Christ, and we're being transformed as we're filtering every thought through the filter of Jesus' faithfulness and God's promise, as opposed to how things feel or how things appear. And so it says, uh, um, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And in the Amplified, that was the New Living, Trash, New Living Translation, in the Amplified Classic, it's cool because it says, uh, I, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God. So in the, just the us acknowledging the mercies of God, what God's given us. We deserve hell, you know, and everything that we've been given is the icing on the cake because we've been saved from what we do deserve. We are not entitled to anything. So we owe God everything. It just so happens as we're giving God everything and we're living as those living sacrifices, we're experiencing the truth of the Father's heart. We're experiencing the truth of how much he us. Which just sets us free from the fear that justifies thinking about self. But the part that I thought was cool in that Amplified says, um, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. And I thought that part was so cool because like all of our faculties, all of our members, like everything we're thinking, everything we're feeling, everything that we're sensing until it's brought before Jesus, there's no, like, uh, we're not positioned to glorify God because we're still making it about us. We're still looking out for us and we're only finding our true purpose as we're part of a whole. And like we've been talking about just the John 17, God's unifying us as we're part of a we. We're not no longer identifying for self. We're finding our purpose in loving each other, glorifying God and loving him in loving each other. And that's exactly what I feel like God's doing throughout the body. And so, uh, um, Lord, we just thank you, God, for just anything that we've been sensing, Jesus, that you laid down your life, God, that we could be those living sacrifices, and you're actually enabling us to do that as you're building our faith, Lord. You're so incredibly just patient with us and kind with us, God, but I thank you that you're maturing us, Lord, to where the, the things, God, that would pull us and keep us in bondage to self are actually the very things that are setting us free, God, as we're just choosing to trust you, God, as we're choosing to be a living sacrifice, Lord, surrendering those things to your glory, knowing it's impossible to please you apart from faith. And in doing so, finding ourselves in your presence, Father, where the truth just sets us free. And God, I just pray for anybody that's watching, Holy Spirit, if there are specific things that you're highlighting that we've been feeling or even pains in our body, God, or just things we've been sensing or just emotional trauma or things that we've been going through, Lord, tonight we just surrender those things to you. We thank you, God, for how you're going to work them together for good. We thank you how you're using those things to draw us closer to you, God, as we're surrendering control, we're surrendering rendering, understanding, saying, God, may your will be done. May you be glorified. Like Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, we just pray, God, not our will, but your will being done. And in that place, having a greater revelation, Lord, of what you've accomplished on the cross so we can receive just that wholeness, God, that we can receive the oneness as we're finding our place as part of your body, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.